Hey y'all, let's take a look at two things today. One's a little geometry, and this is, uh, the first thing is fractional equations. Very quickly, first, let's review. I'm not gonna do this entire thing, but what is the method of doing this? What do you do? If you had to, you had to explain this to some new algebra student, what, how would you do it without name calling or physical violence? That's hard, isn't it? Yeah, okay. You're gonna mash this over twice, right? The worst one is two decimals over three X, plus that over twice, two, equals U 20, and you solve it, right? Okay, that's kind of the process of what we're gonna to do today. We like equations, at least I do, they're my favorite thing, and peanut butter ice cream is good too. Um, equations are good when they have all integers, no fractions, all that mess, you know? And that's what I like to deal with. So when you see, oh gee, our point is here to make these into integers, to mess with them, and not fractions and decimals, that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna turn this mess into something that resembles peanut butter ice cream, or at least integers. I can't guarantee that first part. Okay, well, all we need to do is first off, let's make all these into you know, improper fractions so we don't have mixed numbers. So four and a half x, we're gonna rewrite that as nine halves x. Minus three fifths, that's good the way it is, equals negative, that would be five fourths. Okay, all right. What we can do is, again, we can take all of this stuff and uh, just multiply all the way through um, by the common denominator, if you want. Well, what do two and five and four all go into? And the answer you should probably know is 20, all right? If you didn't know, you could always multiply two times four, uh, five times four, and you'd get it, but you'd have to do some extra reducing there at the end, but anyway. Okay, so I'm just gonna multiply the entire thing by 20 over one, okay? I'm gonna do this mentally. So a little bit of this mentally so we don't have to write, waste too much time doing this. If you, first let's do this one. If you are multiplying something by 20 and dividing by two, that means you're multiplying actually by 10, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go 10 times nine is 90X, right? Okay, the second thing, let's go to this one. I have a minus there, I'll take care of that. If you're multiplying by 20 and you're dividing by five, that means you're actually multiplying by four. And four times three is 12. Boom, done. Now, by the way, if you go, oh, I'd rather not do that, fine, go right ahead. For the second one, you would go 20 over one times three over five. That'd be 60, 20 times three, and then one times five is five. You could do the arithmetic at the very end. That's okay. 60 divided by five is 12, same thing, all right? This is gonna be a negative. If you are uh, multiplying by 20 and dividing by four, that means you're multiplying by five in reality. So there you go. There's a negative 25, yoink, and there you go. Now this, this is all integers now, so we're in good shape. So let's move the negative 12 over. That gives me uh, 90x, and then negative 25 plus 12 is the same thing as 25 minus 12 with a minus there, boom. And divide by 90, and there's our answer. What a disgusting answer that is. Negative 13 90ths, what in the world? That's really weird, but anyway, okay. All right, let's take a look at the second one. Same thing here, pause and copy. Uh, the only thing different is that you have two terms in the, uh, the numerator of this first one. So we're gonna still do the exact same thing. We're gonna multiply all the way across by the common you know, denominator, five, two, and three, and this time that will be 30. Okay, it's gonna be 30. And if you wanna visualize 30 over one, fine, go ahead and do it. Okay, the first one, let's take care of this one first. Uh, if you're multiplying by 30 and you're dividing by 5, that means you are multiplying by 6. So I'm just going to do, we'll just do an extra step here. We'll just make sure it's really clear, okay? This one, if you're multiplying by 30 and you're dividing by 2, that means you're 30 divided by 2 is 15. So 15 times 3 is what we're doing. The last one, if you're dividing by, multiplying by 30 and divided by 3, you're actually multiplying by 30 divided by 3, which is 10. 10 times 1 is 10. Okay, we got it. All right, let's change this up a little bit. Six times four X is 24 X. Six times two, negative 15 times three, and there's a 10. So let's go, this here goes over. So I, I got a minus 12, I, I got a plus 45. Mm -hmm. That's gone. So 24 X equals 
10 minus 12 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 45 is 43. So just divide by 24, divide by 24, and that gives you 43 divided by 24. Good enough. Okay. That's all there is to it. Or 1.7916. But you don't have to know that. Just stick with this. That's good enough. Okay. All right. Let's try the third one. And this is kind of weird. Look at that second term. That's got another one of those, you know, couple of terms in the numerator there. Okay, same thing. There's also something else that's different. What's it, what else is different? This three, right? There's no denominator. Well, just make one, for heaven's sakes, just do it. Okay, common denominator is 14, all right? Let's do it together. Multiplying by 14 and dividing by two means you're multiplying by seven. Seven times three x, 21 x, done. Multiply by 14, divide by two, which means you're multiplying by two. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, you know, let's just go ahead and do what, we're do, do what we're doing here. So 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. Done. 14 times 3 is 42. And there you go. Well, 21x. Oh, that should be plus it. Oh, wait, should that be plus 2 minus? Okay, that's going to be 21x minus 8x. That'll be 13x. 16. <laughs> Going over here, that'll give us negative 16. I'm making sure I didn't do anything wrong here. 2 times negative 4x. Okay. I think in the book this might be positive x, but we don't care. We're just in our own problem at this point. 42 minus 16 is... No, actually, we're good. We're good. Okay, 42 minus 16 is 26. So 13 times what gives you 26? Well, the answer is 2, and there we go. We got it. Okay. Good enough. All right. The second part of what we're doing is called overlapping triangles. Overlapping triangles. Now look at that drawing. We already know this. Remember what this means here? Remember that? Okay. So what we have here, we have overlapping triangles, is that number one, this little triangle and the big triangle, they both share angle A. So that's going to be the same angle. This little triangle has this second angle which is congruent to this angle, B. So B is congruent to D. Well, that tells us immediately that this is a, you know, third angle that is congruent to this angle here, all right? So we can actually pull this drawing out and make it, there's our first triangle, and then there's our second triangle, and so on, to make it look like that, correct? Okay, and we, then we know how to do the little, uh, you know, the ratios and to figure out what the side lengths are and so on. That's what we're going to do next, okay? They'll ask you to find X and Y, for example, on this one. Let's take a second. If you want to copy this down, go ahead. All right, this is um, a little, little bit more involved than the ones we've done before. But let's go ahead. First thing we should do is let's do a little drawing of both triangles. That's going to be a 4 and a 7 and a 9. The second triangle, you don't have to make it as big as it is, for goodness sakes. Just make it easy on yourself. Okay, first off, you tell me, what is the side length of this big triangle right there? It's 10, right? 4 plus 6. This one here, 7 plus x, right? We don't really know exactly what it is. The bottom is going to be y, okay? So they will tell you, find x and then find y. Well, I, you know, it, it, you're going to do exactly the same. If something works... We'll do it again. It doesn't matter if we if it looks different. We have a method that works. Well, then let's do it again. The exact same thing. Let's go for x first, okay? Well, you can look at this and go, okay, well, I got 4 is to 7 is 10 is to 7 plus x, right? So we can just write it. So we'll go 4 is to 7, left to right, left to right. That will be 10 over 7 plus x, okay? Well, 4 times... 7 plus x, that's equal to 10 times 7. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times x is 4x, that equals 70. So 4x is equal to 70 minus 28, that'll be 42. And divide by 4, that gives you 42 over 4, that reduces to 21 over 2. And there's your x, okay? Let's take a look at y, same exact thing, we'll just do it a little bit differently here. 4 to 9 is 10 to y, piece of cake, right? 4 to 9 is 10 to y. So 4 times y is 4y. 9 times 10 is 90. So y is going to be 90 divided by 4, or reduced will give you 45 over 2. And there you go. It's the same thing. The only thing different is you end up with an equation like this. 
which you're going to have to distribute and then solve for x, a little teeny bit more involved, but no big deal. Okay, and that's it. Overlapping triangles. Okay, go ahead and try practice problem A, pause it, and give it a whirl. Okay, well, I mean, the common denominator here is obviously 12, right? All right, make sure I have the right one here, is it? Okay, sorry for the delay here. Uh, before, okay, yes, that's correct. All right, so let's go 12 over 1. If you're multiplying by 12 and divided by 4, you're multiplying by 3. 3 times 2x, 6x. 3 times 3, 9. Done. There's a minus here. If you're multiplying by 12 and divided by 3, you're multiplying by 4. 4 times 4, 16. Done. 1 fourth, 12 times 1 fourth is 3. So we have a 6x here. And we have a 9 minus 16 is negative 7, and that equals 3. So 6x is equal to 3 plus 7. So x is equal to 10 over 6, or 5 thirds. And there we go. All right. Pause it and try B. All right, this is different because this lacks a denominator. You stick it in there. Common denominator is obviously 15. Okay, the first one will be multiplying by actually 15 over 3 is 5. 5 times 4x is 20x. Done. If 15 over 5 is 3, so we'll have a 3 times a 7, 21. And 3 times negative 2x, that's negative 6x. Done. The last one will be 15 times 2 is 30. Okay. All right. Well, 20x minus 6x is 15x. Moving the 21 over, 30 minus 21 is 9. If you divide by 15, divide by 15, x will be 9 over 15, which reduces to 3 over 5. There you go. Okay. All right, let's pause it now and try C. Draw the two triangles first. You can draw them as small as you want to, just make sure they're accurately drawn. Okay, go ahead. All right, here's triangle 1. I'm just going to recopy this thing down. 2, 3, and 4. Triangle 2. I don't care how big it is. I'm just going to make it so I can mess with it. All right. Over here, I have 2 plus 3. That's this side, 5. Over here, I have 3 plus x. That's this side. And the bottom is going to be y. So I'll go with, um, I don't know, let's find x first. So 2 to 5 is 3 to 3 plus x. Or you might have done 2 to 3 is 5 to 3 plus x. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Let's just do 2 to 5. The left to the left equals the right to the right. All right? 2 times 3 plus x. That's going to be 2 times 3, 6. 2 times x, 2x. And that'll be 15. Okay, so 2x, <coughs> excuse me, equals 15 minus 6. So x is equal to 9 halves. There you go. All right? That y is pretty simple. That's pretty straightforward here. We got 2 to 4 is 5 to y. You probably see right away. 2 is half of 4. 5 is half a y. Y is going to be 10 when you set it up. There you go. Okay. All right. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good time with those problems today.